This technology, even though it was invented long ago, is um, being produced pr commercially today still. So this Nintendo 3DS system that has a 3D display in it actually does use a parallax barrier display. And it uh, reportedly produces good, compelling 3D images. And the act of making sure your nose straddles those two view zones is handled by your hand, which is good at quickly and unobtrusively just rotating the Nintendo. Uh, a more complicated and uh, more impressive variant on this is the cylinder that was invented by a number of people, including uh, Yendo-san. In the cylinder, uh, it is a cylindrical display, and imagery largely seems to float inside of the display, although it's also possible to project imagery, I believe, a little bit outside of the display. Uh, inside is a column of LEDs that is programmed to blink on and off in a very specific pattern. And that column of LEDs rotates at high speed. There's also a cylinder of these sort of uh, blades or fins that as it spins in its direction allows you to, is kind of synchronized with the rotating LED so that each uh, pixel in time is only visible from certain points of view as you stand around this display. So as you walk around it, you can actually, you know, walk around the person who's projected in 3D. Now moving away from parallax barrier displays, uh, there are also systems that use little lenses. Uh, perhaps they're brighter, um, perhaps they give you a different number of views, but they also have problems of their own, such as introducing uh, uh, aberrations, that is, the imagery could distort or it could have color that doesn't look quite right. Anyway, um, Gabriel Lippmann and Herbert Eves used an array of these little tiny lenslets, they're called fly's eye lenses, that give multiple perspective viewpoints of a scene. So, for example, if you took a picture of a scene from many, many different points of view, uh, rearranged the resulting photographs uh, such that they're underneath these little lenslets, they allow you to view the, the three-dimensional scene from different points of view, depending on how you're looking at this sheet. And it's a little hard to explain with this static uh, slide, but that's the general idea. So here's an example of what one would look up uh, up close. This is an example from 2001 from an article on Optics Express. So this was an image of a model of a little dog taken from many different points of view and through the lenslets you could see that each lenslet has its own point of view of the scene. And then when you want to look at it, uh, depending on where you stand, you see it as if it was normal again. Uh, there seems to be a lot of popularity for this technique in Japan's R&D lab. So here's another integral imaging based system uh, out of Tokyo showing different views of a 3D scene as seen through their integral uh, photography lenslet array. So we were just talking about integral photography, which uses an array of bumpy fly's eye lenses. And that was invented before a simpler technique called a lenticular image. Uh, so in 1915, Walter Hess proposed using columns of long, thin lenses, maybe one or two millimeters apart. And that throws away the vertical parallax. You can no longer look above and below images, but preserves horizontal parallax, meaning when you look left and right, uh, you should be able to see around objects. The simple case is if you have a left viewpoint and a right viewpoint, you cut those images up into strips, and then you interleave or interlace those strips. And when you put a lenticular lens ray in front of it, if you're in just the right location, your left eye will see the left strips, and the right eye will see the right strips. If you, but if you move your head around, the image will sort of uh, you'll see the right and the left and the left and the right, it won't look good, and then you move a little more and you could sort of see it again. If you want to allow your customer to see around objects, if you want them to have horizontal parallax, you would take many, many photos and interleave all of them, and then you could see a 3D image with look around. There are some practical limits to this, though. Um, if you want something of a normal size you can hold in your hand and have decent resolution, people get to about 10 or 25 viewpoints. But if you try to fit more than 10 or 25 little tiny images behind each lens, you'll get effects due to diffraction, which means that you'll get a lot of blurriness. Um, and you'll also get a number of other uh, artifacts from doing that. So here's an example up close of what is going through each lenticule. 
you can see the interlaced images are uh, untangled by the lens array. Now some companies are very good at making these lenticular lens arrays and some just stamp them out of plastic without, without much thought to the aberrations that they create in the underlying images. So I highly recommend if you're making a 3D display using lentical, lenticular arrays, you have to really get samples of the lenses and get samples of the film that are well matched to the lenses to make sure it all works out right. Furthermore, uh, the producer needs to have a lot of smarts when it comes to the software that produces the underlying images. So if they make incorrect assumptions about where the viewer stands, if they um, do things like that, then the imagery just won't look right. It'll look really distorted and unimpressive. But if you do it right, it could look quite good. Um, a lot of work has gone into getting your head into just the right place. This is really not trivial. So one big complaint about these interesting optical systems is that you or you and your friend have to be standing just right to see 3D. So uh, Nick Holloman, who also helps run the, he's one of the chair people of this SPIE conference on 3D displays, spent a lot of time uh, helping the 3D displays placed in laptops be easier to align. And this is some photographs from a, a paper on this. Uh, there are commercially available lenticular displays, and these little images are maybe from 2008 or so, but they're fairly representative. Companies like Alioscopy, um, Toshiba, Acuity are working on uh, flat panel auto stereo displays using lenticular methods. Philips did spend a lot of time on it and had marvelous 3D displays, but it's unclear what the commercial status is of that technology at this point in 2010. So we've just discussed um, parallax barrier displays and integral photography displays and so forth. Uh, there are some more exotic techniques, such as view sequential displays, many projector displays, spinning screen volumetric displays, and, and other systems. Um, one, I think it'll be good to work from a real example. This is again provided by Neil Dodgson, who helped work on a very large auto stereo display with multiple views. So in this case, rather than just having a left eye and right eye, there were a whole collection of views being beamed towards the viewer. So when you moved left and right, you could look around an image. So in the real world, uh, each eye sees a different image. That's the stereo parallax. And when you move your head, you see different images. And that's motion parallax. And in the real world, there's a potentially infinite number of different images. So if you move a little tiny bit, the image changes just a little bit. But systems that we build uh, haven't yet reached that level of perfection. So typically, the viewing zone has a finite number of windows. As you move, you might be able to perceive like a, a, a judder or a jumping from one image type to the next. Um, maybe only one image should be visible through each window. Uh, but you will still see different images when the head is moved. There's a couple different ways of thinking about just what the angular density should be of these views. Um, I think they should be more than one per kind of size of your pupil so that uh, perhaps, and this really isn't proven, perhaps it will trick your eye into focusing better and also it will reduce this um, aliasing artifact you get uh, as you move left and right. Now one way to do it as a thought experiment is just to set up lots of projectors. You can buy a hundred projectors and arrange them all in an arc or in a line and have them all focus on a screen. And then if they're aligned just right, when you stand in the viewing zone, you could see the proper images for your left eye and right eye. But boy, that's expensive and that's really hard to do. And if you want to increase the number of views, I guess you would just increase the number of projectors. But there's a different set of ways to do it you could make a device that displays a different image in each window. That is, you take a bunch of pictures of a scene and then just use one fast projector to magically beam light into a whole bunch of different angular directions so that when you're standing there you see just what your eye is supposed to. So you've thrown away the hundred projectors and replace it with just one or, or eight or something like that.